welcome back to Late Night War. I'm Ellie Waterhouse, and tonight we have a few guests lined up, influencers of our era, so stay tuned right after this commercial break. Did you sleep with my wife? Uh-uh. <laughs> One. Who is the leader of your cult? Hackbush. A new amendment was passed in January called Prohibition. This makes it illegal to manufacture, sell, and transport alcohol. Researchers say too much drinking leads to crime, wife, and child abuse, and accidents on the job. Now we're introducing Frances Willard, an American educator, temperance performer, and women's suffragist. Willard is one of the national presidents of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. <laughs> How are you? Good. Great. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited to be here. Perfect. So just talk to me about what your deal is with everything and just what you believe in. Okay, so something new you should be looking for is speakeasies. And these are underground salons and nightclubs where people go to find everywhere such as penthouses, cellars, office buildings, hardware stores, and um, tea rooms. A new word you should look out for is bootleggers. Yes. These are for when people store liquor in their boots to hide. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it's crazy. Girl, you're kidding. <laughs> I know. It's insane. Sounds like a lot of bushwater to me. Even with the new law, people are secretly going half seas over. Half seas over? <sighs> Alright, well, I'm going to be talking about organized crime is shifting into a big issue around the United States. Al Capone is still being searched for. The purpose being he took control of the fast and liquor business and is killing anyone who gets in his path. So watch out. So now introducing the former president of the United States, Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. All right. So explain to me, what are the Roaring Twenties? So, another major thing that came along in the 1920s was credit. What is credit anyway? So, uh, basically credit is when you buy now and pay later, the banks gives you money in a form of credit and you pay them back over time with interest. Most of the people who use credit when it first came out were people because they were stable but didn't have extra money to spend on luxuries. Well, new products that were usually higher priced items like washing machines, vacuum cleaner, the toaster, and cars. Alright, so what happened to our economy during this time? So businesses grew in construction, the stock market grew alongside of the businesses, and the economy grew by 7%, and only 2% were unemployed. So people had the ability to spend more money and the saving mentality wasn't popular anymore. These are huge numbers for the time, that's why it's called the Roaring Twenties. Alrighty, thank you so much, Mr. President. Now we're just so good to have on the show. I will see you. Henry Ford, the sock de lager of our time, was the pioneer of the assembly line. Now introducing Henry Ford. Hello, Mr. Hello. How's your day going? Pretty good. Great. So tell me a little about yourself and like what you, what your point is in life. Well, despite popular belief, I didn't invent the car. I just found a way to manufacture these cars in an efficient way. This made my products affordable for enough people to buy. I had the idea to divide the workload between several people. So each person does a single part of the car. Then the part would travel onward to the next person on a moving belt, and this provided a way to manufacture just about anything, cost efficiently. Sweet. 
You're going far in this world, aren't you? Yep. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll send it over to Emily who's going to be talking about the women's heroes of our decade. But right after this commercial break. <laughs> Josephine Baker. She is an activist, a successful French African American performer. And at age 15, she ran off to perform in groups as a dancer, and during this time, she also got married. Furthermore, she was a part of the Harlem Renaissance and fought against racial injustices. Next, we have Alice Stokes Paul. She became politically active and was unafraid to use dramatic tactics to support a cause. She joined the women's suffrage movement in Britain and was arrested on several occasions, serving time in jail and going on a hunger strike. When she returned to the United States in 1910, Paul became involved in the women's suffrage movement there as well. In 1923, she introduced the first Equal Rights Amendment in Congress and in later decades worked on a civil rights bill and fair employment practices. Camilla Galito de Topete was an early supporter of many radical feminist issues, primarily sex education in schools, women's suffrage, and divorce. Her views of sex education and women's sexuality are considered to be extremely radical. However, her approach to seeking equality and women's rights are seen as controversial. During the Feminist Congress of 1916, which Galito did not attend, Cesar Gonzalez, an education administrator, read a statement in which Galito attacked the male double standard in Mexico. Finally, one of the most important female figures of this time, Amelia Earhart. She was born July 24, 1897, and was the first woman to fly as a passenger across the Atlantic Ocean in 1928. She was no canceled stamp, nor a dumb Dora, but rather she was a bear cat. There aren't many female pilots throughout the world, so therefore she served as an inspiration to many women, encouraging them to follow their dreams. So now introducing the male heroes of our era, now introducing Bobby Jake. Hi everybody. Yeah. What's up, my man? Everything is Jake. Perfect. So I understand that you are a lawyer as well as an outstanding golfer. This is true, yes. Um, I've been a lawyer for quite some time now, but I'm really dedicating myself to golf. It's nice. So are you working on anything special at the moment? Yes, I am developing a golf club right now in Augusta. Yep. And um, I'm also working on a tournament called the Masters. I think it will be pretty big. Oh. Yes, indeed, indeed. Would you say we could expect in future events? Well, these are going to be huge for the golf world. Like, wow. just the next step, I believe. Um, I expect many tournaments will follow suit, and they will be doing what I'm doing in these tournaments. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we'll see how that takes you in the future. Well, see you later. Have a good night. Throw some golfs out there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Right, so now introducing Bill Tilden, one of the greatest tennis players of all time. World number one player for six years. Welcome. <laughs> What they're saying, then, you know, they right, well, something to it. I look forward to our tennis match, and I'll see you in sport, and we'll put it up as a real reminder of how good I am at tennis. So, thank you. Have a great night. Hit some balls across the court. So, now we are welcoming an up and coming star, a new magician, Harry Houdini. Whoa! How did you get there? Magician never reveals his secrets. Wow. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. So, what do you do for a living anyway? Well, I do magic. Some of my tricks include getting out of a straitjacket underwater. I've even buried myself and clawed to the surface with my own hands. Wow. 
That's impressive. I'm a master escape artist. Anything restraining me, I can escape from. So, anything big coming up soon? Yes, actually, I plan to make a movie that I think will be quite great. That sounds so interesting. I believe that I am leading the magic industry currently. Oh. It only gets better from here. That, well, thanks for coming on the show. Are, is, are, is your exit going to be as cool as your entrance? Absolutely. Abracadam. <laughs> So basically what I did was I completed a non-stop flight from Roosevelt Field to Long Island uh, to New York and then to Paris, France. And it was a 33 and a half hour flight. That is incredible! Is there anything else you have going on? I have a few projects, but I can't really talk about them. I might be mad. Whoa, alright, well. See you later, man. And take off. That's all for tonight, guys. Have a late night roar.